I am going to start by introducing the, our amazing Lightner. And I'm using on my model today the Blanc Blonde with a little bit of Air Libre in there. One of the reasons why I love the Air Libre when I'm mixing for foil work is it has collagen in it. So that with seven essential oils is going to really help to condition the hair as you're lifting. So my technique, as you can see, I started her in the back before we came on stage. And I'm a big, big, like, power placement, big impact. I think the hairline of somebody's hair is one of the most, like, underrated areas of the head. So it's super important to hit those details for your clients who are going to be wearing their hair up, wearing it different styles. It's as simple as using nine foils just around the back. And think of those connecting into your money piece, which we're going to work on right now. So very simply, nine foils can take your color to the next level. And think of it as like a halo piece. So you want to go all the way around. So what we're going to work on today is showing you some power placement on a blonding touch-up how to do minimal foils and get maximum impact. I like to utilize baby lights, teasy lights. Sometimes I'll do some balayage over the ends just to marry everything together. But what we're really going to focus on is her face frame and placing the foils in a way that's going to give her the look of a full foil. So another product in the salon that I love to use as a time-saving for toning. Um, if you're short on time at the bowl and you can't get into like the whole glossing, color melting, root shadow, sometimes that's okay. When you have your natural blonde clients, you can actually use the Deluxe Prime in the Champagne Blonde as a toner. This is going to help to repair the hair. It's also going to give that icier effect with the finish, and it saves you the step of a gloss. It's much quicker in the salon. So I am going to continue here. I'm working on her money piece placement, and as I go up, I am actually going to start pivoting her foils. And the reason I'm doing that is to keep the brightness all around her face. So we want to focus all of that blonde up here. And by pivoting these foils in a way like this, we're leaving that depth there, which is going to help that money piece to really, really pop. So on this next one, when you take your sectioning, you want to take the slice across, and you're actually going to leave this section out. This here is becoming your natural low light. This is becoming your highlight. And as you can see, that color is concentrating right around her hairline. So that money piece is really, really going to pop against the depth behind it. And something you want to keep in mind with your blonding services is to keep super fine sectioning. You always want to be able to see through your sections. It's going to give you much better lift, more consistent results. And just when you're applying, always think of blending it down, leaving the ends out, and folding that foil up is going to protect that hair from hitting the lightener. So going into the next foil, like I was talking about this pivot, we're going to take this next one, and then you have, again, your triangle section. You're going to take that slice on the top, and that's going to be the depth with the blonde concentrated around the hairline. So the idea here is I'm sure you guys all have those blonde clients that want 8,000 foils in their hair. Am I right? Like, who has those clients in the salon? The 800 foil blondes, like, we need to think about working smarter, not harder. 
this is a placement that's going to give you those results without packing in a thousand foils. It's going to save you time. It's going to make you more money. And it's honestly, I think it ends up being more beautiful. You have a lot more dimension in that blonde. The blonde pops a lot more. Your blonde is only as strong as what it's up against. So always remember that what you're not foiling is just as important as what you are foiling. So this is going to be my last pivoting foil here. And after this foil, I am going to go in and work on her money piece in the front, which we're going to split across where she parts her hair and then just go in to her mohawk sectioning. So what I want to show you guys with this technique is this is pretty much your full foil. So think of how many less foils you had to do to achieve a really beautiful blonde. And like I was talking about time saving, sometimes it's as simple as thinking about where you're placing your foils. For example, I did her top on a very slight diagonal off. Now I was talking about saving yourself the step of a root shadow and a toner by using the deluxe prime in the champagne blonde. So using a placement like this that's super purposeful in the way that you're placing your foils and what you're leaving out, you're creating almost a faux shadow root with this placement. So her natural that we left out in between and over here is going to create that natural soft shadow. I utilized micro slices, but you can obviously do teasy lights, baby lights, you can do a heavier pickup, whatever it is for your client. And you can see that I did her halo all the way around, connecting. So that way when she pulls her hair up, she has that nice bright blonde and everything is super seamless. One last pro tip of mine, at the very end, if you feel like your client needs a little brightening through the ends, you can always go through with a little bit of balayage through that top layer just to pop it. I sometimes like to do that on clients who feel like their blonde has dulled out a bit. Think of the lightener as more of a exfoliant on the hair because she clearly already has lightened ends, but it will just kind of pop them again and give them back that brightness.